All right, it's time for us to talk a little bit about failover on Marketic as well as interface based routing. So this is going to be a hopefully short and sweet lecture, but we'll definitely go into the details of how we can properly route our traffic, especially when it comes to failover on Marketic. So let's get into the video. All right, so when we talk about failover on any piece of routing equipment, we're essentially trying to figure out how we're going to push traffic over a different path should some type of failure occur on the current path that traffic is currently routing over. Now, failover is very, I don't want to say difficult because it's, it's actually really straightforward to understand. The issue arises with the different types of setups that you get with failover because somebody might just be having like in this topology, I've got two triple PoE connections and setting up failover for this is very straightforward. But the moment you start doing stuff like one triple PoE connection and the other connection is a static connection or perhaps uh, the triple PoE actually terminates on a different piece of hardware, like a different modem or router, and then that router is directly connected to your uh, microtech then you get all kinds of weird, funky things that you need to set up for failover to work, work properly. But I want you to understand how failover actually functions in this video. And then in another video, we'll look at stuff like uh, recursive routing so that you can potentially fix issues if you are using um, directly connected pieces of equipment at your premises to kind of set up the failover. But in our example, we're just going to use two triple PoE connections connecting to a LAN and we've got this little LAN subnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up a scenario where traffic is actually flowing out over the one link over ether one on our primary triple PoE connection, could be our fiber connection. And then should the fiber go down, it stops routing traffic, then we want traffic to be able to fail over over ether two to our second ISP, which might also be a secondary fiber or a wireless link or LT or something. But what you need to understand is traffic will be going over one path exclusively. This isn't going to be ECMP. That's something we'll cover in another video. Here, you're just going to look at how to set up failover. Now, failover can be automatic or it can be a manual process. And we'll look at both ways. First, you just need to understand how failover works and how we're going to set it up. So let's get into a topology. All right. So. We're here on my Linux machine. We've connected to EVNG. And similarly, as on the slide or the diagram you just saw, we're going to use this router six that's connecting to router two and three, which is basically the ISP one and two. And we are receiving a triple PoE service from both of these providers or the R2 and R3 routers. Now, I want to just quickly log on to the router six because we're going to do all of the setup on router six. Nothing is going to happen on either of the other routers. We're looking at this primarily from a CPE perspective now so we can set up some type of failover. So we want to set up failover for our router six, which is connecting to router two and router three. Now I just quickly want to have a look at my interfaces because I do have two triple PoE uh, sessions running to each of those other routers. And in theory, we are receiving an IP address or a point-to-point -point address. And actually, let's quickly cover point-to-point -point addressing as well while we're in this video, because point-to-point -point doesn't need to have a super long session. So in essence, whenever we think about point-to-point -to -point links, which could be something like triple PoE, it could be a, a wireless link, it could even be fiber, it could be, even be between two service providers, they don't want to waste IP addresses, then we get stuff that we call point-to-point -point addressing. Now, point-to-point -point primarily comes down to stuff like a slash 30 address or the actual point-to-point -point addressing, which isn't strangely available on all vendors, but it, it's working on most of the big vendors. And this is what we call a slash 31 network. Now, this is quite strange because it might not be something that you're familiar with. So typically you might see something like a, you should know what a slash 32 is, which is a single host, which I'm like doing here with the IP address now, 192.0.0.1 slash 32. That would be a single host. Then we get the slash 30, which would then in theory be four IP addresses. So there would be the network address, which would be dot zero. There would be the broadcast address, 
which would be dot three. And then we have dot one and two, which are, are available addresses that we can use. So that would be fine to use in a type of point to point addressing, but it's still a bit wasteful of IP addresses because we've got a network and a broadcast address, but we're only having two hosts that need to communicate. So what we then get is what you call a slash 31 subnet. So you don't actually mark it as slash 31. It's still just a slash 32 on the um, address side. But when you configure the network, you're actually putting it what the remote size IP address is going to be. So an example will be if I go back into Unbox and I look at IP addresses, what I could in theory do is I could actually assign another IP address. So let's let's type it out as, let's see, we've got uh, 10 or we've got 164.0.254 uh, for this triple PoE out one connection. So if I wanted to make a slash 31 address, your address would be what's on my router. So dot 253 and your network would then be your next hop, the device that you're connecting to. So in this case, it was 164.0.1. I'm not going to apply this because my triple PoE server also has the addressing bound to its own side. But in theory, this is what point to point addressing is. It allows you to more sparingly or better use your IP addressing so that you can maybe carve out a slash 24 network for all of your point to point links. And then all of your point to point links will only use a single like it, it will use two IPs between the two devices to communicate. But what makes point to point very nice is it allows you to do stuff like interface based routing. Now point to point only works with interface based routing. What I mean is if you go into your routing table and let's say you want to add a route and you want the gateway, you don't know what the IP address is of the gateway. Well, you could know what it is, but let's say you want to rather just use the interface because let's say you are using a triple PoE connection like uh, this triple PoE dash or out dash one or out one. And that might be a dynamic IP. It might be changing. So if your gateway is going to perhaps change then it might just be beneficial for you to use the actual interface as your gateway. And this is where you can select, hey, my default route out to the internet will be the triple PoE interface. So I can apply that. And now I've got a default route out via my triple PoE one, which is this connection to router two. So if I want to test and just make sure connectivity works, I could do a ping to www.google.com. <laughs> Apparently not because I don't have a DNS server set. So let's just quickly set one. Uh, server 8888. Let's quickly see. I can ping www.google.com and it gives me a response. So that is one thing with interface based routing and we've covered the point to point addressing. Let's look at failover routes because what I could do in my topology now, and this is actually what people typically have when they set up triple PoE connections. Let's just go back to our triple PoE interfaces. What you will typically do is you might have add default route on by default. And let's say you have multiple triple PoE connections, your issue, and it's not really an issue, but you, you might create uh, some ECMP routing. So let's say both of those routes will have a default route distance of one. If I look at my routing table, all right, we're actually not receiving the ECMP, so that's fine. I'm actually happy with that. Um, but in essence, we kind of now have failover set up. So the triple PoE dash out one is now our primary route because we can see it's the active route, it's black, but there is a failover route now for our triple PoE dash out two and it's blue. So it means the routing table is aware of the route, but it's not actively being used. Now, what is nice in the event of a failure on the triple PoE dash out one, so let's say the link drops, then the triple PoE dash out two can just take over. So let's just emulate that. So I could do this by perhaps just quickly deleting that link between the two devices to emulate a network going down. And I just want to reconnect onto Unbox. The reason I got disconnected was because I was obviously using that MAC address uh, to establish that Winbox session. So let's just reconnect quickly. Because we should still be able to connect um, via the other path. I'm just going to disconnect. 
uh, connect to ROM on again, get back onto router six. And once I'm back on router six, if I look at the routing table, we can see that the triple PoE uh, dash out two took over. But since our routes are now being injected dynamically by our triple PoE servers, so I'm just going to bring that other cable back in so that we can get the link back up. And I just want to explain more clearly again what's happening with this failover process. Um, that looks right. So once I've connected that, we should actually see the connection come back up. And it did come back up and triple PoE dash out one is again the primary route. But typically what you would like to see is that the administrative distance is different between your failover and your primary route. Because if you just add a static route, by default, the distance is one. So if you're going to add a failover route, you might just want to up the distance a little bit. So you maybe might, might want to make that 10 or 20 or 50 or, or something like that. So it's got a higher distance because if the distance is higher, it's definitely always going to be the failover route. So to do that, we could also just go into the triple PoE settings and we could set what the default route should be. So I'm going to apply that and make it 20. And then you'll see it will reflect in our routing table. So now the secondary route is distance is 20 and it's still blue. And again, what means is if the primary route goes offline then the secondary can just take over. Now, what I want to do is I do not want to learn the routes dynamically or dynamic and statically at the same time. I don't want the triple POE to add the default route for me. So I'm just going to disable those options. And then what we're going to do is we will actually add these default routes out ourselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my triple POE. And then I want to see my remote address is actually my next hop where I can route the traffic to. So I'm just going to add a route for that. And I could make that my gateway, but let's do the interface based routing. So I'll keep it as the triple POE dash out one. And let's just set the distance ourselves. So here I'll make the distance one. It will be the primary route. Another thing that I want to talk about while we're in the route creation menu is the check gateway option. Now check gateway is very useful because this allows this route to check if it's valid. So it can test the gateway that you've specified. It will ping it or it will send ARP requests to see if the gateway is up. I think it will send like two requests. So it might send two pings or two ARP requests in an interval of 10 seconds. So after two times of failing, then it will then pick up, okay, this route is no longer accessible. We're going to just um, turn it blue or whatever. And then the other route can take over. And then once the gateway becomes accessible again, then those routes will then recover and just return as normal. So let's just set up the check gateway as well. So I'll set it up for ping and I'll apply this. And don't worry about the scope and stuff here. That we'll also discuss when we get to recursive routing. So now we've got one route to get out to the internet. Let's just add a failover route as well. So it will also be a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 because that's to the internet. And here my gateway will be the triple PoE dash out to interface, which is my second triple PoE connection. I'll also use the check gateway option just to make sure that the gateway is live. And then I can set my distance to this for 20. Now we've got failover routing. So in essence, what should happen is if the triple PoE connection goes off for whatever reason, a line failure or a service provider issue or something, then our triple P OE dash R2 should just take over. So let's test this by going into the terminal window and apologies, I realized that the zoom is um, out again. There we go. So let's just run a continuous ping quickly to 8888 and we can see it responds. So let's emulate that there is a failure and this time I'm not just going to take the cable out. I'm just going to disable the triple POE dash out one and that should also kind of do the same thing. And there we can see my routing is still working. It's still able to get to the remote destination. And we can see that the triple POE dash out one is now unreachable. And it's picked that up because of that check gateway option. And it knows that the remote side is no longer valid. So now the secondary route took over. So this is perfect. This is now automated type of failover for us. But let's say 
Um, we didn't want to fail over with automated settings or anything. We actually want to do it manually. Then that's fine. We can do that as well. So let me just turn on the triple POE dash out one again. And then we can see it's taken over. And in this case, all that we need to do is we can just change the distance. So I'll just make the distance for triple POE dash out one larger then triple POE dash out two. So I'll maybe make this a distance of 50. And now we force traffic out over the secondary path. Reason being that um, <laughs> it's got the lower distance. So there you can see the out two is now the black or active route. And this could be useful because maybe the other path, the primary path isn't actually down, but you see that there's some type of packet loss or you can see that there's issues on that link and you don't want to use that link at the moment. So then you can manually fail it over this way so that your traffic goes over the cleaner or clearer path because you know that the ISP2's network is currently running more stable. All right, so what we've covered in this video now is point-to-point -point addressing. We've covered um, failover routing. We've covered a little bit of some of the triple PoE stuff, but we'll get into triple PoE servers again in another video. We've looked at our check gateway option and you've seen us change the route distances to make things work. So this is where I'm going to end off the video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And in the next video, we will either be covering ECMP or we will be looking at recursive routing. Cool. So catch you guys in the next video. See ya.